Okay guys, so what I've done is I wrote a little script called scene change uh, 1 and 2. So basically the first one is will change from intro scene 1 to uh, 2 and the, now it's intro scene 2 will change it to gameplay. So I'm in my intro scene 1 right now and I've made a new empty object and called it scene changer and I just drag and drop the script in here. You can change the timer manually by using Unity in here. Uh, to set after what time you want the scene to change. I will show you how the ch um, code looks. You can copy that basically. So I have a variable which is the time, 45 seconds, function on start does nothing and then on update uh, time equals delta time and if time is zero then application load level and put the name of your scene. So I got intro scene 2 and my scene is called intro scene 2. And yeah, you can change the time in here so you don't have to change the code. Um, and the same thing with intro scene 2, I've done the same thing basically, I've added a... Oh, oh there we go, scene changer, it should be at the bottom here. And this one's 24 seconds basically. Um, so I will show you how it works, I will go to main menu, I'll save that. I'm not going to go full screen, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see the thing on the side so I will press play and we have everything come in it's not it doesn't fit because I'm not on full screen and yeah everything works and then I go start game the best radio welcome back everyone you're I press escape so I can have my mouse and if I go to scene change you can see the time going down and uh, yeah we'll see if it works Hey John, um, I'm sorry, I won't be able to make it for this morning. Some things came up. Would you possibly come in the evening? Yeah, sure, no problem, man. Oh yeah, and I forgot to tell you. Oh, and you drop your phone. And you crash. Five, four. The unexpected. Two, one. Change now. Yes, it worked. And then we have the second animation, which is the broken car. And... I, I can't seem to be... Oh, there we go. Scene change. 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 3, 2, 1. Change. Yay! And now I'm in the game. Alright guys, so what I've basically done is i made a new canvas which has uh, the two panels which is the red and the black panel and I have the text which says press a big massive space here and then to skip and then I, I put a raw image in and I just put my space and I've adjusted it so it looks like that. Now if you go to my script, I've, I wrote a new script, I called it skip continue buttons because I was going to make it a buttons first but then I thought hey just press space. So basically, on update, if input.getKey, key code space, basically is space, um, application load level, and then I put intro scene 2, so it's going to load the second intro scene, and I'm going to make another uh, script in a second, which will basically take you to the gameplay if you want to skip that one, using space as well, so we'll do that in a second. So first of all, I'm going to check if it works. So we have it playing, and then if I press space, it changes as you can see. Okay. So let's do the second script now. Skip to gameplay probably. Perfect. Okay, now I'm gonna open this up. The scene change. I'll open this one as well. So I'll have two of them open. Skip to gameplay one, skip to second scene. So I'm just going to copy this, pretty much. Tab, there we go, and gameplay one. And save. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my scenes, my intro scene two, save this one. I will make, oh, I will make a, uh, 
new and rename it to skid or manager or whatever and just assign that script which was skip to gameplay just put it in here and that should hopefully work as well so if I press space yes it takes me to the gameplay okay so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to scenes intro scene save this one and I will just copy this this little canvas here control C and control V there we go now it's here as well so if I press play now there we go and it says press space to skip and I press space and it works okay now I'm gonna show you how I made this character movement here so what happens is I've made a new scene called gameplay again I've just I've um, I build a terrain, I actually used the terrain I already had built, which was in, uh, if you go to assets, your terrains are being saved here, and you can see how it looks roughly opening them up. So I've just used the terrain I've already had, so I don't have to um, do anything, and I've, I've, I've added my assets, which is a broken car, a light, what I did for the spotlight is I animated it, uh, so it basically flickers on and off and I just put on repeat so it just repeats all the time this is just being the only thing I've used is literally the intensity um, and that's it and uh, okay so what I put I added an FPS controller which you can find in assets standard assets characters first person and prefabs you have FPS controller and rigid body controller I don't know what the difference is but I always use FPS controller and we have this little guy here now the scale of mine is 3 by 3 and 1 uh, and that looks good and then basically you have you just you just play around with these settings here so walk speed uh, uncheck is walking unless you want him to walk uh, by himself so walk speed is 6 run speed 12 obviously you want him to run faster actually I might move that to around 9 actually 10 because yeah run speed run step length so basically the, the, you, you use WASD to move around um, you can use arrow keys as well. It's it's already pre-built. Um, use your mouse to look around. If you press shift, you run. Um, and yeah, what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a flashlight. Oh yeah, and if your if your assets that you added have not like if you can walk through them because I could walk through this car before. What I've done is I added a box collider. So you just press add component and search box collider. And then you press edit collider and you've got those little squares here and you can basically manually adjust them so uh, your character cannot walk through them. Okay, so when you have your flashlight model or whatever, I'm using the phone as the model, uh, what's going to happen is you're going to have um, a light. So let's make a um, spotlight and I will basically put it literally on the camera here on this little thing right there. Align with you and basically make the angle the intensity of the light I'll put it on 4 then range yeah that, that should be fine soft shadows you can choose the color if you want I think white looks the best maybe a bit yellowish just a little bit, just to make it look a bit realistic. And now we're gonna basically put the spotlight onto the first person character. Okay, I found a script on the internet of a flashlight because I can't 
make one myself. So we're gonna call this flashlight. And basically, I'm gonna paste it in here from this. Well then, looks like I'm gonna have to write it out. Okay, so I've got the code and this should hopefully work, so let's save this. And now in Unity, uh, let's see what problems we have. But damn it, Mono Develop. Alright, just fixing the. Just capital letters basically, that's really it. Yep, that's all. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is where your flashlight, where your light is for the spotlight, create two empty game objects, rename one to on and add an audio source to it and then copy this and rename this to off okay so basically you're gonna put your audio sources in here one for on one for off and now we will put the flashlight script onto the spotlight I'm gonna rename the spotlight to just flashlight Uh, I didn't want to put it into the Xperia, actually why not, I can put it in here, just because. Alright, oh, we need to assign it. Alright, so flashlight is flashlight. Sound on will be the sound on, and sound off will be the sound off. There we go. Now if we go into the game. The flashlight is off, and if we turn it on, it's on. Good. Okay, guys, so what we're going to do now is basically we're going to make a trigger. So when you walk through a uh, invisible wall, it will trigger a sound, basically, or an animation or anything else to basically, you know, scare the person. So we're going to do that right now. Right, so what we're going to do, we're going to create an empty object in a scene. So... Let me just zoom in, there we go. So I want the first creepy sound to happen when the guy walks through here, for example. So right click, create an empty object, uh, rename it to uh, sound trigger or whatever you want. And now we're gonna add a component, a box collider would be nice. Uh, now make sure the sound trigger will be here. So I'm gonna go game object align with view and I can see it here. Now I'm going to change the rotation to 0, 0 and 0 and we can see the box collider around it. So what we're going to do, we're going to make the box collider bigger so that the, your character will walk through it and around there. So there's no way he can possibly miss this. There you go, that looks good. Yeah, that looks good. Okay. Alright, so now we're going to add a uh, audio source to this. Actually, now hold on, we're going to do it differently. We're going to add a component and then audio source. We're going to do it like this. And now we're going to create a script. So go to scripts, right click, a uh, new JavaScript, and let's call this um, sound trigger one because you obviously want a lot of different sound triggers so we're going to create a, a few different um, javascripts okay so now we're going to select a sound trigger and drag and drop the code which is still empty there's nothing in there uh, but just drag and drop it so we don't have to do it later 
Okay, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna delete this because we don't need this. Uh, so we're gonna create a new variable and we're gonna call it Let's try it out. I made a backup. Just if that happens, just press yes. I'm um, you made a backup and Oh I see what I've done wrong. Okay. I did a bit of research and I found this on the internet and I've played around with it and everything and this is what I came up with, so I added a new variable which is is played, and it's originally on false, so on trigger enter, um, the log will tell us that it's working, and is played equals true, so then the thing can play, and then function on trigger exit, so when you exit the collider, uh, it will tell us that it's working the second time, and if the play equals true, then it will play the sound, and because it, it is true, it will play it, and then function play sound, and it will get the component um, and then after it's played it will go back to false so it's not going to play anymore um, right so copy that down after you've done this um, what you do as you can see I already tested it so what happens you have your sound trigger put your scary sound in here so I'm gonna go object sounds sound one for example there um, and make sure your box collider on sound trigger is on is trigger. Okay, so now we're gonna test if this works. So I'm gonna go into the game. I've got my original audio playing in the background. And then if I walk through here, it should. Yes! It worked. Good. So it does work when we walk through it. Okay. Okay, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna add some fog to our scene so it looks a bit more scarier. So how we're gonna do that is we're gonna go lightning. If you don't have it, then go uh, window and find it here. There we go, lightning. And on the bottom there's an option which says fog. If we tick it, then uh, and press this image button thing we can see the fog happening and damn it looks pretty cool so in the game uh, you can kind of see it on the sides what we can do with the fog is change the color and the fog we can change it to different ones I don't really know what the difference is this one is more of a on your screen and you can put the density up or down Okay, too much. I reckon about 0.2 will be fine. And uh, choose the color. And now. We have our fault. 